Hey everyone, Joshua Kirk here with you once again, and now it's time for episode 267 of Album of the Day, in which for today's album review, I'm going to be uh, talking about a uh, Pittsburgh rapper, and singer, and songwriter, and producer, uh, who uh, was definitely uh, incredibly uh, popular in the 2010s, uh, and uh, definitely uh, a very... Uh, gifted uh, young talent uh, went for a little while uh, but uh, then unfortunately in uh, late 2018 died of an accidental drug overdose uh, and uh, since then has you know definitely been one that uh, uh, many musicians along along with fans have really uh, been have really been uh, grieving for the last uh, couple of years. Of course, I'm talking about the artist known as Mac Miller, um, and even though uh, he died in uh, 2018, uh, producer John Bryan, along with Mac Miller's family, uh, managed to uh, put together a, a little posthumous record, which was released on January 17th, 2020, and the album is called Circles. Uh, and uh, it's the follow-up to 2018 Swimming, which uh, was kind of considered Mac's last album by many people because of uh, the fact that it was the last one completed while he was still alive. Uh, but uh, really, uh, the really, it circles. That's definitely his swan song for sure. Um, now, I never really talked that much about Mac Miller here on my channel, um, and you can kind of see why I've never been a huge Mac Miller fan. I mean, I've always appreciated him. I knew he was very talented, and uh, it was kind of cool how he sort of uh, ventured uh, kind of away from hip-hop a little more on later efforts, but uh, he never really struck me, but I never really, like, loved his music for maybe a few reasons. One, uh, I found maybe his vocal delivery to be kind of underwhelming, and two, Occasionally, his arrangements were like very kind of bland, in my opinion. That was kind of an issue I had with some of what I had heard off of Swimming was that the production on that record was just so smooth and so dreamy that it's kind of uh, just a, a little bit tedious. Uh, so yeah, I wasn't really sure, uh, and, you know, how I would uh, react to his posthumous record, given that. I've seen a few too many scenarios where posthumous records just feel like a money grab to help the estate of an artist uh, and stuff like that. Uh, like, you know, that that's kind of a problem I have, like, with some of Little Peep's posthumous projects. But, you know, then again, I'm not really a Little Peep fan anyway. Um, any fan anyway. But I, what I love about Circles is how... John Bryan, uh, the other collaborators on this record, uh, really managed to uh, deliver what is Mac Miller's most fully realized project to date. And uh, actually, the instrumentals, I think, are great. I think Mac's voice, even though still not, you know, incredibly remarkable, uh, it's definitely uh, brings a lot of emotion to these performances, and it really showed that he was really given his all on this album, as if this would be his last sort of album he would be making. Um, making, and plus some of the teaser tracks, like the song Good News, definitely got me excited to hear what Mac would do on this album, too. Uh, and I will say, the, upon hearing it, I'm very pleased to say that this is Mac Miller's best album in my opinion, uh, at least. Uh, like, uh, I will say, it opens very well with the title track, uh, which uh, is kind of the spare instrumental with kind of sparse bass playing, uh, really gorgeous kind of uh, guitar keyboard, like guitar or keyboard playing. There's like a really nice kind of snazzy vibraphone on there too. Uh, and Matt comes in about uh, 30 seconds in with this performance, and it's just so... That could not be more emotionally devastating. Uh, so devastating. Like, it kind of feels like uh, the perfect way to open this album. Because it really does feel like a swan song here. 
um, song here. Uh, then the next track, Complicated, goes for something a little more energetic, uh, with uh, some killer synth chords, along with uh, some really, as well as some really nice kind of syncopating drum kick patterns, too, uh, as well as a very confident vocal performance from Mac. Uh, and also, incredibly catchy song, too, with the hook of, Does it always gotta? Does it always gotta? gonna be so complicated like it's just it's got a lot of soul to it and uh, I've heard some people like Anthony Fantano compare this song to like something off of Tyler the Creator's Flower Boy which I definitely could see that comparison as uh, it definitely uh, sounds like uh, he's taking inspiration from like some of Kanye's old stuff or something like that because Kanye has been a really big influence on Tyler on his latest projects. Uh, his latest projects. Uh, and also, the song sort of sees him sort of, you know, trying to look at the, the positives in life, even though he knows he's, you know, not okay, or something like that. Uh, something like that. And also, a really cool kind of falsetto vocal that he... That, that he brings uh, to the end of the song that's sort of unexpected and sounds really cool. Uh, probably my favorite track on the record would have to be the song Blue World. It opens with a sample from the Four Freshmen song, uh, It's a Blue World. Uh, so I think the title of this song, Blue World, kind of makes sense given that it's the name of the sample, too. Uh, it's actually, fun fact about that song, it's the same song that Jamie XX sampled on his sound, song Sleep Sounds off of In Color. Uh, In Color. It's the doo-wop vocals that you're hearing on that track. Anyway, uh, on to this song. Uh, we first hear, hear a sample of the song, and then John Bryan, or whoever's producing the beat on the song, literally flips the sample into this really kind of freaky and sort of freaky, but like very uh, intoxicating <laughs> and it is just insane over the uh, over the really nice uh, very smooth drum kick patterns uh, along with the very uh, cool psychedelic keyboards as well as Mac delivering this really uh, fun uh, performance rap performance uh, with some really great bars that are definitely very memorable. It's definitely one of his best, like, I'd say, hip-hop leaning kind of jams. Uh, the song is also incredibly catchy, and I just love the confidence as I'm hearing him say, Don't trip. We ain't gotta let him in. Don't trip. It's like, you know, Mac had very, f Mac obviously had very few moments like this towards the end of his life, but you know, at least he had one that was just so damn satisfying. And that's why this song is just so good. Damn. Okay, uh, the next track on here, of course, is the title track. that, Or actually not the title track. It's the teaser track for this record, Good News. And right out of the gate, from listening to the song, I knew that this was going to be a little different from what you expect. For Mac Miller. This is not going to be a hip-hop record. This is going to be maybe a kind of soulful and psychedelic singer-songwriter kind of thing. <clears throat> Bless me. Uh, like, uh, love the sort of, love the kind of plucked twangy guitars on the track. Uh, really, uh, in, I think the drums and the bass syncopate with the guitars and uh, the rhythm very well. The song has a very smooth kind of funky rhythm to it. Uh, it actually, um, like, uh, it's the kind of instrumental that sounds not so much like hip-hop, but more like, actually, indie rock, in my opinion. I've heard comparisons to, like, M. Ward for this song, but it also actually kind of reminds me of maybe something J. Som would do as well. I mean, I, I could totally see Melinda Duterte putting on there some very shy, introspective, a very shy, introspective performance on top of this instrumental. However, what Mac does vocally on the track isn't too bad either. Uh, I think uh, it really has a lot of emotion and, 
you know, uh, and, and, and you know a song is like, you know, this good and this gorgeous when you see Anthony Fantano, you know, <laughs> crying, trying to, you know, <laughs> so trying to, you know, describe the song in his track review. Um, <clears throat> song in his track review. Uh, the next track I can see is a little bit of a lull, in my opinion. It kind of eerily reminds me of some of the issues I had with projects like Swimming, th where the instrumental, the amount of reverb on it is just like, it's it's kind of bland and sort of, uh, you know, not really doing that much for me. <laughs> for me, even if I do also, uh, I don't really care for Max kind of, underwhelming, sort of mumbly vocal performance on there. Uh, it doesn't really make me feel much. Uh, even if I do really like the little melodic, uh, melodic turns the song takes in the chorus. I wish I could hear Ariana Grande's background vocals a little better, though. <clears throat> better, though. The next track, Everybody, is actually a cover of a song. Uh, I'm not so sure of what song he's covering on here, but ring on here, but I do love uh, how kind of spare the arrangements here are, and really one of Mac's best vocal performance I think he's ever done. It's done. It's like so beautiful. And also, uh, he puts on there a really great bass line, uh, wonderful drums on the song too, love the piano. Uh, it's It definitely sounds uh, kind of, uh, actually sounds kind of Beatles inspired, like I could totally see something like this in the track list of maybe Abbey Road or even the White Album. Huh. Album. Hmm. Huh. Album. And also, you know, it's definitely very soulful too. Everybody's gonna live and everybody's gonna die. <coughs> next. So next is a kind of, um, next is the song Woods, which kind of goes for this like woozy woozier psychedelic instrumental uh, with these very colorful layers of synths that really remind me of like a Tame Impala song. The Impala song, like uh, I could totally, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe uh, Kevin Parker had a hand in producing the song even though he didn't. Uh, and song also love the very gentle acoustic guitars that syncopate really well with the drums uh, and also uh, Mac thematically goes in pretty deep about, you know, his mental state, like his uh, depression and stuff like that, and I wonder if Woods could be a metaphor for, like, you know, how he was feeling a little bit, you know, sort of, he feels like there have been Woods kind of in his mental state, sort of, you know, block, sort of, you know, blocking him or something like that. Hmm. <clears throat> Of blocking him or something like that. Uh, it's definitely one of the more unsettling tracks on the record, even if the instrumental is definitely just smooth as is just smooth as frick. Uh, the frick. Uh, the next track, Hand Me Downs, uh, is another track that I think could use also Hand Me Downs as kind of a metaphor. Uh, in this case, could be metaphor for sort of you know. You know, Mac wearing his feelings like they're old hand-me-downs or something like that, like emotions he's had his whole life, uh, and uh, it goes so well uh, over uh, some kind of R&B tinged guitars and synths and drums, and also there is a pretty uh, emotionally uh, affecting uh, guest vocal performance from uh, Baros Sura, who uh, like is playing drums on the song. It's some guy I never heard of till this album, but he, he sounds really nice on here. Um, nice on here, you know, and uh, the song kind of reminds me of something that uh, could be a kind of a polarizing comparison, but uh, it actually kind of reminds me of uh, John Mayer. Like, I'm serious, you know, the guitar playing on the song sounds like is something John Mayer would be playing on. I mean, you know, in fact, you know, in fact, I'm a little shocked. John Mayer never got an opportunity to do something with Mac Miller because he did do quite a few things with Travis Scott on Astro World. Uh -huh. Astro World. So yeah, you know that's that's how I feel. Uh, the next track uh, that's on me is a much 
the vibes get more downtrodden on this song. But once we get to this song, uh, we get these really beautiful finger pick plucked guitar arpeggios. Uh, really good piano and sort of marching snares on there too. It act this is the song where the instrumental, along with Mac's vocal performance, sound very much inspired by like Elliot Smith's XO record. Uh, like, uh, and that kind of makes sense given that John Bryan has some close ties to Elliot Smith and uh, you know worked with him on his uh, on like his only two major label records. Uh, the ones where he went for something a little poppier and more expansive uh, than his really dark lo-fi uh, folk records. The records. Uh, I also hear a little bit of John Mayer inspiration uh, on this song because uh, of the very bright uh, guitar playing. And uh, this, is an, this is another track where uh, uh, even, even though Max vocals aren't at their most remarkable, they really pack a lot of emotion, and I really believe him, and also love his very kind of eerie, that's on me, that's on me, I know. Like, uh, it, and it's like uh, one of the sadder, it's like one of the saddest songs on the record, really. Uh, so really, uh, for me, and I get chills every time those guitars hit. Uh, the next track, Hands, is another one that, really reminds me of Tyler the Creator's Flower Boy uh, in terms of the instrumental. It's got, you know, these really like rich layers of jungle percussion and pipe organ and uh, it's definitely an instrumental but uh, sounds very much unlike anything I've heard from Mac before. Uh, the, this, this isn't necessarily my favorite vocal performance on the record. Uh, the record, I think the kind of uh, the, uh, tone of voice uh, he uses uh, can be on this track can be uh, a little bit annoying in some places uh, and just some places but I, I think he does have some really fantastic bars on the track uh, I would say and also the very intoxicating yeah 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 I think opens the song in a really good note uh, the next track, Surf, as the title suggests, uh, is, uh, def is definitely uh, kind of a surf rock sort of jam uh, featuring uh, these uh, very smooth, uh, very kind of sunny uh, lead guitar lines uh, along with uh, some pretty spare uh, bass and drums over it. Uh, another, even though this track is another one that I don't quite, you know, favor as much as other cuts on the record. Uh, I, I find Mac's performance on here to, you know, be a little underwhelming. Also, the track is a little too long given how it doesn't really have that much, uh, you know, climactic or really, like, super exciting build-ups. It's kind of, you know, it, it kind of goes nowhere. Uh, if, where And the only other place it really goes to is uh, some kind of decent bass playing, as well as a lead guitar uh, lick that, you know, is so distorted that it kind of hurts my ears a little bit and, you know, not really my favorite moment on the record. Uh, I think the album does close close on a really high note with the song Once a Day. I mean, this song, it's one of the simpler tracks on the record, but it also at the same time is one of the most effective and most, like, depressing cuts on the entire record. I mean, this clearly sounds like a, a man that who is just, you know, kind of, you know, has his life on the line and is sort of, you know, is, is sort of content with, you know, his life ending eventually. Uh, and also, uh, so, and I will say, the very spare instrumental, I think, is just perfect for this kind of vibe, the kind of woozy, synth and uh, kind of minimal percussion uh, and, and it is a track that you know if you really read into you know what Mac was going through at the time you know it's going to be one uh, it's, it's going to be one pretty harrowing experience for you yeah just, just had to get a tissue for that uh, but yeah, I love this record. I loved it a little more than I kind of expected I would, even though 
good news sort of gave me hopes that maybe it could be pretty good. Uh, and uh, I definitely think it is unfortunate that Mac didn't live, you know, to really, you know, really marvel at his at his beautiful creation that he's made on this record. However, I will say John Bryant uh, did an excellent job really knowing what Mac would want out of this album, you know, uh, and really putting a lot of effort into it, you know, even though it's probably must have been a very emotional experience for him since he worked incredibly closely with him, I think, and I think produced a couple of tracks off swimming, right? Yeah, uh, tracks off swimming. And also, I will say, they, uh, this album does a good job of really capturing what made uh, Max such a special, uh, special talent and special person. Uh, and special person. Uh, and it's definitely, uh, you know, there, there couldn't have been a more beautiful way to uh, sort of open 2020. Strong 8 out of 10 on this record. Uh, that's my review for uh, Mac Miller's posthumous album Circles. And I'll see you for episode 268. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>